Good morning and welcome to our Monday morning prayers on the Moravian YouTube channel. We gather from all over the UK and maybe from even further away, but we come as one family, one flock, called together by our shepherd. He has called us home, gathered us in, given us a land where all are welcome. He has sought us out, brought us here and welcomes us this morning. So we begin by listening to the watchwords for today. Monday the 23rd of November 2020. Our Old Testament is from Isaiah. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. The hymn verse, how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. And from the Gospel of Mark, Jesus saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. The Bible reading that I've chosen for this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 34 and I begin at verse 11. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements of the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep, and make them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away, I will save my flock and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. The Lord will be their God, and my servant David will be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. We will now share in the hymn, When I Needed a Neighbour, Were You There? And the color and the name won't 
When I needed a shelter, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a shelter, were you there? And the creed and the color and the name won't matter, were you there? When I needed a healer, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a healer, were you there? And the creed and the color and the name won't matter, were you there? Wherever you travel, I'll be there, I'll be there. Wherever you travel, I'll be there. And the creed and the color and the name won't matter. These are the words of Jim Wallace, who helped set up a food bank in Washington, D.C. some years ago. He writes, After a while, and in response to growing need, we joined with neighbours to start a simple food line on Saturday mornings, where many people lined up just 20 blocks from the White House to get a big bag of groceries that would get their family through that week. Volunteers, many of whom actually needed their own bags of groceries, came to put them together each week before we opened the line. Once everything was ready, we prayed. Mary Glover, a powerful Pentecostal woman of faith, would always pray. She prayed like someone who knew who she was talking to, and it was clear that she and her Lord were in regular conversation. I remember Mary Glover's prayer still vividly today. She prayed, Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. That the walls of my room were not the walls of my grave, and my bed was not my cooling board. Lord, we know that you will be coming through this line today. So, Lord, help us to treat you well. Help us to treat you well. Amen. You see, she was able to see Jesus and to point to him in the hungry people coming through the food line. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. As you have done to the least of these, you have done to me. Mary Glover didn't have much formal education and in the day she was a cook at a daycare centre. She made little money but she was one of those spiritual leaders who holds neighbourhoods together. She showed me where to find Jesus more than any professor or academic theologian. Mary knew that you find Jesus among the most vulnerable members of society. The hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the prisoner. The people that Jesus names in Matthew 25 when he says how we treat them is how we treat him. So let us pray. Lord, help us to see you in everyone that we meet, in friend and in stranger, in man and in woman, in citizen and asylum seeker, in gay and straight. Help us to see the best in them all and to offer help to all who are in need regardless of their circumstances, creed or colour. Help us to remember that in you, we are all sisters and brothers united in one family across the world. Remind us that how we treat others is a reflection on how we treat you, our Lord and Saviour. Continue to help us to love our neighbours at least as much as we love ourselves. And this we ask in your name. Amen. A prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Yours is the earth, Lord, and all in it. The valleys, mountains, seas and spray. The land, the pastures, the trees and fauna. All around us we see stories of your bounty, your exuberant goodness 
your flourishing provision. You have made us to live here, nurtured by this earth and by work. We find joy in this vocation to be your people, living, working, resting, supporting. We thank you for the gifts of living and for all these gifts of bounty all around us. Amen. And a prayer of confession. Lord, truly we say to you that we have seen the broken and have not been moved to compassion. Truly we say to you that we have heard people mourning and have not given them our time. Truly we say to you that we have witnessed oppression and have not raised our voice. Truly we say to you that we have seen the stranger and not said a word. Lord God, hiding in all strangers all around us, we are truly sorry for what we have done and for what we have not done. And we ask you to deepen your welcome in us so that we might deepen our welcome around us. Amen. And now we join in the prayer that Jesus himself taught his disciples. The prayer that begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our prayer of intercession this morning comes from the book, The Word in the World by Donald Hilton. Lord Jesus, you set a child in our midst as a potent symbol. So help us to make our prayers honest and innocent of guile, inquisitive and willing. Lord Jesus, you sweated over a carpenter's bench. We pray for those in workplaces which are understaffed, for those worried by redundancy. Strengthen them in their work and help them to see life beyond the factory, office or shop. We pray for those who cannot find work. Give them renewed dignity, which builds up confidence and a sense of self-worth. Lord Jesus, you had nowhere to lay your head. So we pray for the homeless, for those on the edges of society, and for those having problems with mortgage repayments and debt. Help them to find creative ways forward and guide those who support them. Lord Jesus, you took Peter's mother-in-law by the hand you were touched by a woman seeking healing, and so we pray for those who are ill, for those who know that they will never get better, and for all who care for them. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before you those that we personally know who are in need of your healing touch. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of a friend. We share the tears of those who grieve in bereavement. For those from whom a loved one has been wrenched by sudden death, and for those who struggle in loneliness after years of compassion. We pray for all who mourn, that they will be comforted. Lord Jesus, 
you shed tears over Jerusalem. And so we pray for our world, for cities of conflict where politics and race divide, for nations where peace is fragile amidst the posturing of self-seeking leaders, for regions of the world where hunger for power clashes with national pride. Lord, we pray longingly for peace with justice to fill our world. Lord Jesus, you laughed with joy and delight with your friends, and so we rejoice with those who celebrate joyous events. We share the delight of families united. We revel in the anticipation of those preparing for marriage, planning anniversaries, or waiting for the birth of a baby. And we unite in hope with all who struggle for a brighter future. And so we come to our final prayer. Wherever we go, may the joy of God the gracious be with us. Wherever we go, may the face of Christ the kindly be with us. Wherever we go, may the encompassing of the spirit of grace be with us. Wherever we go, may the presence of the Trinity surround us to bless and to keep us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.